Afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this will be the very first live Facebook episode of the Business Leaders New Zealand um, uh, live feed. So basically what we're up to is we're doing a series of live interviews with subject matter experts and those out there providing incredible service, not only to the business community, but to the community at large. So we're very lucky today to be um, joined with Kevin Hill. So Kevin, welcome to our first broadcast. Thank you very much, Matt. Nice to be here. Or nice yeah. to be in my own bubble, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, from one bubble to another. So uh, no, it's, it's nice to be able to do this. So um, ultimately, just a wee bit of background around Business Leaders New Zealand. Uh, it's been around now for uh, over well, almost four years. Uh, and um, it was initially established on LinkedIn as a professional group and has since grown to um, uh, to be now a group not only on LinkedIn but also on Facebook and we also now have a website the Business Leaders New Zealand. Now the, the aim of these talks and this series is to give our members and the broader community access to some great thinkers and to those that are out there doing an amazing job. So I would love to um, hear a little bit about uh, Kevin and your history and your background and then we'll delve into what you're up to today. So, yeah. what's the story, Kev? Yeah, absolutely. I suppose starting at the uh, starting at the start, I'm in New Zealand uh, eight years. Uh, mm -hmm. Moved across from Ireland, where I was involved in construction management and also working in search and rescue. Uh, when I came to New Zealand, uh, the first first port of call was as a project manager on earthquake repairs, and then moving into high risk work in scaffolding and rigging. Uh, all the while being part of the fire service as a volunteer firefighter, and in the last probably sort of three, three and a half years, I've been a career firefighter. And everything I picked up from the search and rescue to the project management to being a, a career firefighter, uh, I started looking at my own uh, well-being, sort of mental health, physical health, how it impacted me, how it impacted those around me. And the more I worked on it, the more I started realizing the benefits of it. Obviously started trying to expand on that with helping friends, family, colleagues, and they then began saying, look, you need to actually start doing something around this because obviously it's a, it's a passion of yours and you're getting a good message across. And that's, uh, that's what I done. I set up a small sort of consultancy business and was working at that quite happily. And I actually got a, a connection through a friend of a friend and he had a very successful, well, he's actually one of the, the top uh, well-being businesses in Ireland, uh, Titan Wellness. And he's called Niall, Niall Ronan and he's actually a professional rugby player. And Niall's, Niall's story is very interesting. He was uh, obviously at the top of his game and picked up a career-ending injury and branched into uh, strength and conditioning. And from there, started obviously looking into the well-being aspect, found at Titan Wellness. And the way the model works is it's basically providing corporate wellness solutions by using industry experts as well as the, the information and sort of past experiences that we all have. Yeah. Uh, and the, the, I mean, the similarities that myself and Niall have is with the, the professional sports and the emergency services, mm -hmm. everything goes back to teamwork, communication, and your own well-being and the well-being of others. And using that model, it's so easy to go into any industry and actually deliver wellness solutions from that standpoint of teamwork, communication, and actually looking after yourself and mm -hmm. taking it down to the basics and actually making it understandable for people. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Gosh, I mean, there's there's a huge amount of content even there to pick through. I mean, um, yourself being a, a volunteer a firefighter, so I understand you're out at the Christchurch International Airport. Is that is that right? Is that where you're spending? That's that's time? correct. Yes, uh, I'm full time there, and I'm also a volunteer in Littleton. So yeah, yeah, work yeah. on that and both of those. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And then, um, gosh, I mean, where to start? So I mean. Possibly, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely crack into the, the Titan Wellness. I definitely want to explore more on that. Um, perhaps in terms of um, uh, what's happening out in the field, uh, obviously the Christchurch International Airport has been significantly impacted by what's going on with, with COVID-19. Um, has work at that end, is that, is that uh, taken a bit of a blow or an impact for you? I mean, look, it's, it's like every business in, in the world, really, it, there, is, there is impacts there. Uh, mm we're still business as usual. So from our point of view, the nothing nothing has changed. Uh, if if anything, it sort of shows, it's highlighted to us how well we're looked after there from, you know, from all points mm -hmm. of view, from the, the staffing to the, the wellness. I mean, 
we're we're business as usual, which is not something everyone can say. Uh, obviously, there's there's stresses and worries, like every industry, especially with. I mean, I was I was speaking to someone today, and their business is in a very very strong position. Their staff are in a very strong position, but mm. they were actually looking at their staff, uh, their financial worries based around, you know, outside businesses, other investments that they might have. They're impacting their partners' income. So I mean, every everybody's affected in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Yeah, that's great that those conversations are taking place. It's just really, really good. Um, and then so uh, spinning forward through to Titan Wellness, I mean, I imagine your services um, will be in high demand um, uh, moving forward. I mean, has, has there been much of a peak in terms of uh, it's, the level? It's actually really, it's really interesting because, I mean, we, we've, had to, we've had to think on our feet. And we, we've always specialised in face-to-face -face interaction but what we're actually starting to realize is pretty much like what we're doing here now. It's face-to-face mm. -face interaction. Times have changed. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's so many, so many sort of apps and software packages out there that we can deliver. We can deliver mm. our service online. And yeah. what we've actually done is we've taken some of the, the seminars that we deliver, broken them down into webinars, followed that up with e-learning and then like uh, email correspondence with the participants. So, Everything that we were doing one on one can actually be done more cost effectively through the the tools and resources that are there. I mean, we could have we could have hung up our gloves and said, "Oh, look, we can't do this anymore." But that's not the way to operate. People still need to get that across, and there's a message to deliver, and we can still do it. So let's let's think of a way we can actually do that. And to be honest, it's provided us a great platform that we will probably carry on going forward. Mm. Yeah, I think that's uh, yeah. You've it's such an interesting point, uh, and uh, uh, from my experience too, it's it's absolutely that. It's that the the face to face is the the training, the workshopping that um, uh, in in my field I do also. And all of a sudden, it's like okay, well, what other alternative ways and means have we got available to us? Clearly, things like this, um, uh, streaming, uh, Zoom conference calling. And inevitably, some of this stuff will stick, you know. Um, so when we get back on our feet and back to normal, I'm sure many of us will be choosing some of these platforms to continue our good work. So in terms of the uptake um, and the, the feedback that you may have had to date, is it, those that are engaging and using these new ways of doing the trainings, is it going well? It is. I mean, it's, uh, again, just uh, the other day, I had a very interesting conversation where, there's companies out there now that are looking to invest in their employees' well-being, obviously because of the, the, current, the current climate, but mm -hmm. they don't know where to begin. Uh, and again, we've, we've actually set up a package. It's a very basic package. Mm -hmm. And the way I explain it to them is, you know, you don't know what you don't know. They were trying to figure out what angle to deliver the well-being aspect from. And I was like, well, look, get them to run through this package. It'll give them an understanding of many different, you know, mm -hmm. potential avenues to go down. And they can then take the, the consensus of the group and say, we want to focus on financial well-being because people are concerned or we want to focus on mindfulness because people are working from home and under stress. So it, it's just they can take those tools, pick what's actually going to work for their staff and do that. And I mean, the, the tools that are available, there's nothing, nothing can't be done these days. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. So in terms of this, the services, perhaps before um, COVID-19 kicked in and, and, um, and also in, in today's world, um, what, what types of services and, and tools do Titan uh, Wellness bring to, the, to the, the table? Yeah, I mean, we, again, we always, we always sort of specialised on the face-to-face the -face stuff, but that was everything from, you know, the, the well-being seminars, uh, mm -hmm. mindfulness seminars, yoga sessions, uh, you know, corporate boot camps, physical education, providing nutritionists to, to organizations. And I mean, the likes of the physical aspects, we always thought it can't be delivered without someone actually traveling to the location and doing it. But we've actually hosted a few uh, boot camps where we'll have one person doing the workout. People are actually working out at home there. I mean, it's a prime time because you can actually have a, you can have an 11 o'clock meeting in your gym gear. You can do a 12 o'clock hit session and then you can do another meeting at one o'clock, still in your gym gear. Uh, so it's it, it, you know people are people are starting to realize how how fluid their work environment is when they're working at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was actually I was talking to um, uh, the traveling ergonomist uh, Kirsty Angerer uh, on another live stream. Uh, live stream. 
uh, pages that I've been running over the last few days, and we, we were kind of coming to the same conclusion that um, the the, the, the work-life balance or the, uh, the the work-life blend that some people will describe it as um, is becoming ever more evident. You know, like that it, it is achievable. Um, and I guess underpinned by a great deal of trust uh, from senior management and senior leadership. Mm. So are, are you seeing um, uh, that being demonstrated by some of your um, clients, perhaps from the leadership point of view, that they're actually taking on board the, the well-being and the, um, the overall health of their team? Is, is that something that you can... Yeah, I mean, something that I'm finding from talking to some of the clients is they're their health is being impacted more than they realize. Uh, mm. Working from home is great. Yeah. But what actually happened previously is people would get up in the morning, they would get ready, they would get showered, they would get dressed. They're, they're actually moving, they're burning energy, they're, you know, they're, they're physically moving their bodies. They would then yeah. walk out to their car, drive to work, walk into the office, go upstairs, sit down, walk to a meeting, mm -hmm. you know, walk to lunch, and then reverse the whole thing and go back home and do all those things. Uh, there's a, I'm a big believer in the opportunities to move, OTMs. And what's happening now is people are getting up and I'm not running anyone mm -hmm. down for wearing their PJs to a meeting, but they're getting out of bed. Yeah. They're walking into their home office and they're spending all day there. In some cases, actually yeah. working more from home than they did from work mm -hmm. because they feel they're at home. They, a lot of people actually feel guilty about working from home. There's, there's no need to be, you're, you know, you're, you're doing your jobs. You don't need to work an extra hour. You don't need to work through your lunch break. Uh, yeah. So... I mean, some of the small things is keeping routines, keeping habits. Actually, before you go to your home office, open your front door and step outside. You know, walk around yeah. the walk around the block. You're allowed to you're allowed to sort of get your physical exercise. So try and try and keep normality and keep the routine. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's something um, I've certainly been struggling with. Uh, I've found that. Um, uh, I, I start in the early hours and work all the way through um, till the, the wee small hours of the following morning. But I guess there is there is a wee bit of a blend where I'm spending a lot of time with the, the kids and the family, but um, trying to find that switch off point. Oh gosh, it's um, yeah, it's a real challenge actually. It's it's quite exhausting. Um, so from your perspective, uh, uh, you obviously you've given us quite a bit of valuable insight already. But are, are there some top tips that you would recommend people um, to utilize to to try and survive the the next few weeks or, or a few months ahead? Yeah, I mean, look, I think it goes back to I'm a huge believer in in routines, mm -hmm. and a lot of people have ingrained routines that they don't even realize are are habitual or are a routine. I mean, people. Yeah. People used to make their lunch the night before. They used to sort out their work bag for the next day. You know, yeah. simple things like getting in the car and driving to work. We have we have lost that normality, and that's where we need to create a new one. And the new one shouldn't be get up and head straight to the home office. It should be get up, actually take ten minutes to have a cup of coffee, or you know, take a walk outside. But mm -hmm. it's it's little things like actually having you know, bookending your day, having something that you do before you start work, having something that you do to signify that you've finished work. It's too easy to, you know, to finish your, your work day at home, sit down to have dinner and then think, oh, I'll just shoot back and fire off a couple of emails. You need to actually have a, a process in place where you say, right, I'm going to jot down the first five things I need to do tomorrow morning. Once I've jotted them down, that's the end of the work day. And it means you can then go down the next work day, look at your list of the top five things to do and do it. You're, you're starting and ending your day the way you would normally, but in, yeah. in your home environment, you need to have that uh, that system in place. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, 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 we've talked before, and I remember uh, one thing that came up in conversation was um, – in, in the normal situation where you've you've left your workplace, you've come home before you turn the key in your front door, you then kind of say to yourself, right now, I'm, I'm dad and husband, not, um, you know, uh, firefighter or health and safety consultant. It, it, now, it's all of a sudden, it, it's very hard to differentiate between the two. So trying to keep some of that consistency is going to be really key. Um, now, in terms of how Titan Wellness has responded to COVID-19. Um, I've seen posted in numerous places that you guys are running a, a, a four-week uh, boot camp. Is that right? Yeah, well, what we actually done was we had a lot of uh, a lot of clients contact us about it. And we thought rather than actually, you know, using it as a as a time to, to capitalize, we would actually provide a, a four-week schedule of well-being tips. So there's actually something there for every day of the, the basically the initial four weeks of the lockdown. 
Some of it's very, very simple stuff. Yep. And it actually focuses around, you know, looking after yourself, your family. Uh, you know, it, it's simple things like one of the days is a, is a you know, uh, instead of a casual Friday, it's actually a get dressed for work Friday. You know, get up, put on a suit and tie, put on your good shoes and go to work in your house as if you're going to work in your normal environment. Uh, some of it's around family. I mean, it's one Thursday night where it actually says, cook your favorite takeout meal. And it's mm. just little morale boosters throughout the, the four weeks. Uh, we had a, a very successful boot camp last week where we actually did a 30-minute workout session with some breathing techniques at the end. Mm -hmm. And that's because one of the workplaces that we used to do our boot camp with weekly contacted us and said, look, even though our staff were working at home, we would still like them to get some physical activity. And because they realize that the productivity increase they get when their staff are, are, you know, are moving and being more you know, energetic and happier. So we carried that through and it's like, look, we'll do a 30 minute video. We'll post it and your staff can take 30 minutes out of their day and do a little bit of a, a workout routine. Yeah. That's amazing. So it, yeah. It's just putting those free tools in place that people can look, pick and choose. They don't have to follow the schedule exactly, but if they think there's something that's a good idea for them, yeah, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's so cool. And it's really nice to hear how um, the technology has been able to enable you to continue providing the services that are clearly needed. Um, and it doesn't have to be purely just in Canterbury, but it sounds like across New Zealand and beyond, um, which is, yeah, it's amazing. Uh, a changing world for sure. <laughs> um, I mean, look, we're, we're learning every day. I mean, one of, one of our facilitators was explaining to me how to use uh, zoom uh, mm. rooms where yeah. we, you know, before we would have a, a a seminar or a talk and we would actually say look break yourselves into groups of five and discuss that amongst yourselves mm. i mean on zoom you can actually break off into individual rooms and you can still have those breakout sessions while you're having a main seminar so that, yeah every, everything's achievable if you if you research it or get the the knowledge that's available to to help you yeah absolutely um now i've got a couple more questions for you kevin uh, for those that are tuning in live feel free to fire through any questions you may have we're keeping an eye on the uh, comment section um i can see someone said hello hello um and uh i'll fire those through to you kev but um so from uh uh, from the volunteer firefighting and the firefighting um, uh, arrangements you've got at, at, uh, CIA, at uh, Christchurch International Airport, has there been much uh, information or, or training given in regards to um, managing um, entering a residential home? I, I, this is a bit of a curveball, I know, but um, yeah, yeah, has there been much of a thought around the operating processes around? Yeah, the, I mean, it, it's obviously, it's a very... Uh... It's a very difficult thing to, to sort of interact with. But no, there's there's a lot of processes being put in place. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, how we respond to medical calls, how we assist St. John's in their calls. There's there's a lot of protocols put in place. Uh, and to be honest, it's all very much centered around looking after the, the staff, uh, mm -hmm. of, of minimizing exposure, how we actually interact with people, keeping within our bubbles. You know, every everything has been adjusted to suit what we're actually facing. So, I mean, I think they've been handled really, really well. Yeah, that's great. It's really good to hear. Um, yeah, because I imagine that will be front of mind for many. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just it's a really changing world. It's the same for us. Like, it's keeping us very busy is trying to um, establish concrete um, standard operating procedures for this new environment just to ensure that everyone is kept safe and well. So in terms of um, kind of moving forward, I mean, uh, is there... Uh, can you see the, the the business adapting and changing as a response to um, the the recent events? Yeah, I mean, I, again, I think over overnight we had to change, mm. and I know as as humans, everyone's very resistant to it. But once it's thrust upon you, you have to take action. Mm. And as I said, some of that, some of those changes, I would actually like to see being carried forward. Uh, mm. I mean, the world is a very different place today than it was two three weeks ago. Mm. Uh, and some of it, it's not all negative. Like, as, as I said previously, if we wanted to do a seminar in Auckland and they wanted the facilitator from Christchurch, we would have flown them up. They would have, you know, they would have traveled. Mm. Now we can actually offer the same package with reduced rates because you don't need to. People are starting to realize you can actually get the same content, the same delivery without being in the same room. Uh, and I think a lot of people are starting to uh, starting to realize that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, yeah. Same, certainly the same from this end, um, where uh, the cost of workshop facilitation, you're dealing with um, transportation, um, the physical copies of um, the handouts and everything else, it, it quickly added up in cost. And now all of a sudden, mm. 
it's all been streamlined and you can insert pdfs and all sorts for people to be able to access at a later date so yeah i mean it, it really has changed a lot and i think yeah like you say it's gonna a lot of that change will stick around for sure um so before we wrap up is there any further bits of advice or any um anything else that you would like to raise before we um we head back to our yeah, I mean, I think it's, I think it's just the the normal thing, the, you know, the normal sort of point that I put across that we're we're actually in very difficult times. So if you are if you are struggling, you know, that's that's normal. Uh, and one one thing that I don't actually like is everyone's using the term self isolation. Uh, mm. Everybody's self isolating. So let's let's start saying that we're all isol isolating together instead of self isolation because that's a very negative uh, negative spin on it. We're we're all isolating. And we're all, you know, we're isolating together, even though we're in our own bubbles. I think self isolation is a bit of a negative term. So, yeah, yeah, I like that. Yep, I, I might even nick that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, <Yeah>. go for gold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Cool. Well, look, I mean, um, obviously, you're a busy man, and uh, and I know, oh, gosh, we all are really. So, I mean, I really do appreciate your time today. I think what you're doing uh, with Titan Wellness, and obviously with your voluntary work and, and the work out at the Christchurch Airport, I mean, gosh, it's, um, there's a lot on your plate. Um, and also, you've got um, a, a, a new, newborn-ish in the background, too. So, I mean, it's all hands-on. Yeah, there, yeah. There's a, there's a three-year-old toddler and a five-month-old, and yeah. again, I keep pushing this. Uh, it's a lot of people are concerned about working from home. They're trying to set up their office environment. So it's perfect. It's not a perfect scenario. So it's, it's fine if it's not perfect. I mean, look, I've had meetings with kids climbing over me or having a kid climbing over the person I'm speaking to or cats on the desk spilling coffee. And that's fine. That's, you know, that's the new normal. So let's, uh, let's all cut everybody a bit of slack and let the, let them get on with it, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's a really nice way to, to end this interview, Kevin. I think that's a great, great uh, uh, bit of information to take away. So, look, um, thank you so much for your time today. Um, if anyone wants to check out Kevin and his work, I imagine that it would be um, – uh, well, actually, you, you tell us, Kevin, what's the best uh, website address or email to get – Yeah, uh, it's uh, titanwellness.nz is the website. Mm -hmm. And if you want to get in touch with me, it's kevin at titanwellness.nz. Uh, and oh. happy to happy to speak to anyone if anybody wants any information or ideas feel free to get in touch awesome mate okay well thank you again for your time and uh, look, I'll be in touch take care hey awesome good to talk to you again cheers Matt <laughs>